All right, so I'm looking at a, a V6. All right, you see the pop of valve. There, there, there's no valve there. You have the cooling coming across here, which goes out to the, uh, the valve here, which cools the system down. So the bleed line obviously is disconnected here. So I'm gonna have to disconnect all this to see what's going on behind here. So now I got all the bleed lines secure. Uh, this is a 1982 model. Once I pulled this out, for whatever reason, the number three cylinder does not have a bleed line, which drives me absolutely nuts. Now, so this is connected. Um, I went ahead and just checked the compression on it. It actually has really good compression. It's about 120, 24, 125, about 120. This is the only questionable one at 95, 95 to 100. And then you got 125 and then 120 down here. So this is this could bury the engine potentially now the owner originally when he brought it in he said it was overheating so water that has to be a water circulation problem but i went through and tested for spark i only got spark on these two cylinders right here so that tells me either the switch is bad trigger well hopefully the switches are bad then the trigger this actually looks like a brand new it looks like a new CDI, yeah, CDI, CDI trigger right there. So it can't be, it shouldn't be the trigger. All the wires are connected to the stator. So I'm hoping this will switch boxes. I'm going to give these uh, Kimi, Kimi Motos a try. And anytime you switch out switch boxes, you want to do both at the same time. It has a bias wire that helps, uh, I guess helps balance the voltage going to them. You want around 200 to 250 volts to fire, fire the coil. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, Get this mess right here undone. Yeah, I also forgot to mention anytime you're messing with this uh, electrical stuff, disconnect the battery. I almost made the mistake of doing that myself, so I'm gonna go disconnect the battery like a good uh, a good mechanic. All right, all right. So both of the switch boxes are out. There's a hot mess back here. You just want to make sure that you keep the solid wires on the inside box and the stripe wires on the outside and what i did was i, I took pictures of these because these aren't like v6s where they're actually color coded these are actually numbered so i actually just went ahead and took pictures oh well, i guess they are kind of color coded shows you how much i work on these all right so now the first switch box is hooked up you got the black sleeve and the black wires you got one three and five the sequential order going up and all the color codes match so now it's time to put in the second one so let's get it done all right so as you can see everything's in everything lines up we got two four six we got the yellow white brown brand new switch boxes so what i'm going to do is do a spark test on this uh 1982 uh 150 v6 all right so we were back before i was rudely interrupted by a storm that literally lasted all day all right, so all the boxes are in, all the wires are right, everything's grounded. Uh, I did a spark test before I tried to make it talk, which did not give me what I wanted. Now I have no spark on four and one. Everything else does have spark. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to disconnect the kill switch just to see if maybe it's a faulty switch, which I probably should have did that first. But I'm going to go ahead and do that now and then see if that fixes the problem. Alright, so I disconnected the, uh, the kill switch wires. They're right here and uh, hooked everything back up. And uh, I still got no spark on one and four. And now number one doesn't want to spark, or maybe I just didn't see it because of the sunlight. But I still got spark on all the other cylinders, so it's definitely not the switch. So, moving on, I'm going to test this uh, trigger and just do a resistance test. Uh, so I got to pull everything back out and disconnect everything again. Great. All right, so as suspected, the trigger is good. Uh, anytime you measure this, you always go from uh, the yellow sleeve to the black sleeve, which is what that is. And then you do uh, brown to purple, white to brown, purple to white. And you're looking for around 800 to 1400 ohms of uh, resistance, uh, which as you can see here, 
uh, pretty good. Uh, the, the middle wires, uh, the white and brown ones was 900 uh, uh, ohms of resistance. So I suspected the trigger is good. So now we're looking at potentially uh, a faulty stator, uh, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to try to disconnect the bias wires and see if, see if I can get a spark on one or four. Just, uh, we'll see what happens. All right. Uh, now I'm starting to get a little frustrated, but I disconnect the bias wire and you know I was disconnecting all sorts of wires so I took off the idle stabilizer too. Why not? I'm unplugging everything, but I got spark on all cylinders except number four. So I'm gonna test this coil, make sure that it's reading the resistance that it needs to read. Because right now the trigger's good, there's brand new switch boxes, everything's been connected. Now I got spark on cylinder number one without the bias wire. So I'm going to have to look into that, figure out what's going on here. And uh, I'm going to test this coil and get back to you guys. Okay, so I'm testing the coil, which rarely go bad. And this one, I mean, either positive or negative here. I'm getting zero zero on the chart and I just pulled this one because I was getting a good spark from this one so just to test this one you want about eight eight to eleven is, is ideal of resistance but you shoot hold on let me see if I can I can't talk or work at the same time all right there we go so you want eight eleven this is about a nine yep so that's perfect so right now we have a bad ignition coil what I'm going to do is test number one two since that was also a problem coil as well Okay. And number one is coming in at nine, but we were getting a spark anyway, so we're good there. So right now we just have one bad coil and hopefully a good stator. But uh, all right, so I'm, I'm gonna replace this coil and make a talk. Let's see what happens. All right, so now we have the coils exposed. I did find an L6 coil. Uh, not necessarily a V6 because I don't I don't have V6 parts just laying around, but I'm gonna pop an L6 coil in here. I did test it first. There's uh, 900 uh, ohms of resistance, so I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt this, 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 and install this. Of course, with the battery disconnected and all that good stuff. All right, so I got the V6 coil. Uh, definitely different part numbers on them, uh, but they look alike. Looks like this one grounds in the front, whereas this one grounds in the back. Is that gonna be an issue? I guess we're gonna find out, aren't we? All right, let me pop this out. Come on, there you go. You're done in there, buddy. You're done, your days are numbered. Uh, it actually looks the same from the front, so, so far so good. Pop the L6, L6 coil in there. And now we're gonna screw it, uh, Back on. Go. I go ahead and skip over this part because it's boring. All right. So we got the water running. Finally got spark on this, all six cylinders. Uh, definitely time to make this thing talk. Let's do it. guess is uh, all these bolts came loose uh, the power head was not heating up properly uh, the bleed line as you can see here came loose allowing air to get into this top cylinder here so it is around 95 to 100 
it'll still run obviously it'll it might auto rough but uh, it does talk and uh, the owner said he can go ahead and torque down these bolts I don't I don't like torquing down these bolts so sometimes uh, they're, they're not as you user friendly as they appear so I've had to use hella coils on some of them but that's just some of the ideas all right well the motor is definitely talking it's also making a waterfall around the head gaskets uh, right here uh, of course my job with this engine was to get it to talk it's talking just fine so my job is done Mercs on uh, V6 out all right I'll see you guys thanks for watching as always